Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with another Middle Earth Monday. And this Middle Earth Monday I have been waiting for for 11 weeks now, which is me finally completing the full fellowship and the beautiful Moria Scenic Base that came out of the magazine nearly 20 years ago. So it's taken me nearly 20 years to get this project off my backlog and I'm so excited to share it with you guys. Uh, the reception to this series has been really good. I've really enjoyed seeing you guys share and post videos of you painting along your own fellowships and a couple of you even sharing your scenic bases that you have also had tucked away for many, many years and getting them done. So that's been one of the best parts for me is to see that. There is of course nine other videos that come before this, nearly seven other videos before this, I forgot I did the Hobbits in twos, that show you guys how to paint up the full fellowship. And then of course this video showing you how to paint the scenic base. I'm very excited to uh, tackle this kind of challenging thing. I've never painted a big scenic plinthy kind of base before, so it was definitely a challenge, And but I think it turned out pretty good in the end. Before I get into the video, huge thank you to all my patrons. Without you guys, I would not be able to keep the lights on and the cameras rolling. If you are interested in getting involved in my Patreon, you get extra benefits such as private Discord server and an extra video every single week. So if you like more content from me, check out the link to my page on below and get an extra video every single week. That's 52 extra videos a year. Without further ado, let's get painting this scenic base plinthy thingy. And this is of course the display base we have been talking about for the last couple of weeks as we've been doing all the other Middle Earth Monday videos. For those of you who don't know, this was one of those subscription goodies. So the old um, battle game for Middle Earth magazine that used to come out fortnightly, like 20 years ago. Um, just like the Imperium magazine and stuff now, where if you stick with it for, you know, halfway through, you get a bundle of gifts and halfway through to get to the end, you get another bundle of gifts. Well, this was one of those um, gifts. So it is quite a rare thing. I'm sure there are thousands of them kicking out around there, but they're, they're not that common anymore obviously because it's been so long since that range of magazines was out um, and I've had it ever since then. So I'm uh, very lucky to have my hands on one and get it painted up. So all I did was spray it black and then I thought to myself once it was sprayed that it, there wasn't really a lot of texture on this. This is an old kind of resin pour pulled from a rubber mold kind of job. Um, so I wanted to add a little bit more texture. So I went in with Astro Granite and basically applied that all over the ground surface of this base again. This is me just kind of troweling it out into the, almost like the smoothest areas. Now I know this is meant to be cut stone and it's the interior of a mine, but if you pay attention to the movie, there's no bit of ground that isn't completely covered in junk. Whether that be pebbles or chips or, you know, broken bits of armor, or paper. So I didn't want any of that really smooth look to it. And I did want something that would take a dry brush really well. On such a large area like this, I wanted it to look kind of nice. So. I used about half a pot of Astro Granite, maybe a little bit less than that, and I applied it to uh, all of the surface of the miniature, of the base, sorry. And then I also used this paint to apply it to all of the bases of all of the miniatures as well. So all nine members of the Fellowship got a coat of this. Obviously after I've kind of blobbed on the Astro Granite, I love going in with a, a medium dry brush and kind of stippling it to give it that more texture. So I don't have any of those kind of smooth blobs left over. And this was the result. And already I'd prefer how it's looking, so I'm quite happy with that. As an example, here's Mr. Legolas himself. And this is one thing that has been bugging me the entire way through this process, is that the Lord of the Rings models don't look fantastic until they're fully based. So to finally be able to get some basing material on all of these guys and see them actually 100% finished is an absolute treat. It's one of the, the more, one of the things I'm looking forward to the most with finishing this project. It's not so much them sitting in the scenic base, as very cool as that will be, but it's the seeing the whole fellowship together all based up. Okay, so once I had that all done and I left it a substantial amount of time to fully dry, um, I can get the models out. One of the things I was struggling with, and as I looked this up online, I think a few other people have struggled with it as well, is that Gimli should have what kind of base? The texture base, or should it be a smooth base? Should I have tried to carve in the rest of the runes from Balian's tomb, or it was a nightmare? <laughs> Eventually I went for, I probably want to play this guy in some scenarios, so I went with the same bases that match the rest of the Fellowship, and even if it looks a little odd standing on top of Balin's tomb, I think people will forgive it. From here I grabbed a dark brown uh, base count, for me I went for Rhinoxide, and base coated in all of the wooden parts, and obviously like I said, this is an old resin mould that you pull out of, so the detail on the bases isn't amazing, but you're trying to look for the bits of broken wood and the 
axe handles and stuff like that. After that, we went to Lead Belcher and tried to find axe handles or axe heads and any other metallic weapons and stuff that is discarded amongst the piles of rubble. And of course, we also have Nori, who is the um, the unfortunate dead dwarf slumped against Balin's tomb. Nori is actually one of the companions in the Hobbit trilogy. So he was the one with the slingshot, the weird haircut. Unfortunately, that is indeed him dead next to Balin's tomb, which is kind of sad. After I went to Zandri Dust, and one of the more tedious parts of painting this is to get all of the pieces of paper that are strewn about the floor. I don't know why Balin's tomb had so many pieces of paper. It's not like it was a library or anything, but whatever. There's also a bunch of books on the ground, so I made sure to get the Zandri Dust in at the sides in front of those books where you can actually see the pages. But this took obviously like some of the longest amount of time is finding out which of the kind of bits on the ground are paper and which are little rocks and which are blades of axes. That's the kind of thing where I talk about the detail isn't sharp enough to kind of figure out which some it is. So you can paint them kind of either or. I think I mostly got it right, but there isn't any like top down view of one of these painted online. Probably should take a top down picture and post it up, but then maybe I got it wrong and I'm going to be showing people in the future it's wrong, but ah, I'm overthinking it. I got some corn red and painted all of the covers of all the books with corn red. I like that kind of dark red look for, for tomes and books and stuff. A bit of retributor armor gold was used for all of the kind of ornate covers and buckles and catches that go alongside um, these tomes and books. We will come back to retributor armor gold a little bit later again. Eshen gray was used to base coat the tomb itself. I didn't want it to match the floor really. So I went for a different base coat with that. But then when I dry brush the ground, I'll dry brush the tomb the same. So although it will be a slightly different tone, it does actually blend into the scenario quite well and doesn't detract too much attention away from the figurines, which is obviously the thing you're, you're conscious of when you're painting a base like this, is it's supposed to accent the miniatures in it, not overshadow them. So you don't want anything gaudy, you don't want anything bright. And with that in mind, the next thing I did was grab the Agrax Earthshade and apply it to the entire base. The tomb, all the pages, all the gold, all the books, all of Nori, all the bases of all the members of the Fellowship, all got done with the same uh, Agrax Earth Shade. This would just darken it down. This is old and forgotten and dusty and dirty and grim. And I want to make sure I have that feel flowing through the piece. After that, it's going to go on to a series of dry brushes. Starting with Mechanicus Standard Grey. As you can see, it's already starting to make that ground pop back up again. But leaving all the, the recesses nice and dark. It's okay if you hit the pages or hit the, the metal axes or the wood or anything. They're all going to get re-highlighted anyway, very quickly. So it doesn't matter too much if you get them with the dry brush. Like I said, I'm also going to hit the, t the tomb itself with the, uh, the same dry brush. After that, we're going to go brighter. We're going to go up to Dawnstone. I basically repeat the process, just being a little bit lighter. Um, you can see my brush control being a little bit lighter, not going quite so crazy. But once again, punching that color up very nicely. I did, in the end, actually go up to Administratum Grey, although I didn't record it. This was a very light dusting across the top again. Got carried away and forgot to hit record. So if you notice by at the end of this stage, and then we jump to the next frame, you'll see it kind of go a little bit brighter than even this is. That's because I did hit it with that Administratum. After that, we got some Chaos Black, and we rimmed the rest of the miniatures that we'd done, because basically they're done now with nice, neat, new black rims on their bases. And also the black rim on the big scenic base itself, I basically touched that up with the black as well to make sure that it was nice and neat and tidy. After that, we went in with back to Lead Belcher and re-highlighted all of the metallic bits that had gotten shaded down a little dark. We also touched up all the gold. Just a few dot highlights on those. Just add a little bit of a sparkle to it. But like I said, we want to keep this dingy and dark. And here's me going back in with the same brown. Just hitting parts of those wood, not trying to hit it all. Corn red, again, as you can see, I'm using all the same paints I used as the base coat, but just using them as little slight highlights after the shade has dried. Not trying to get full coverage or anything close to it. And then the same again with the paper, except for this, I went in with a Ushapti bone and just highlighted all the paper just a little bit. 
This was once again another tedious section going back over all the paper with a little highlight. With all the details in the base pretty much finished, I went back to that retribute armor like I was saying and painted all of the lettering um, for the Fellowship of the Ring that was on the front of this. Now it does say Games Workshop across the back and I was tempted to do it in the old red and yellow style um, but I'm not sure if I want to do that or if I want to bother touching that ever again. You can let me know in the comments if you think I should go back and retouch up the back where it says Games Workshop. But I think the most important thing being the Fellowship of the Ring, that's the front of the diorama. So the Games Workshop sign will be at the back of the cabinet for 99% of the time. Here I am finally getting to place all the finished miniatures. Aragon, Legolas. They all have specific ways that they face as well. So the scene is correct. Boromir. Gimli. Gandalf and then the glorious four hobbits starting with of course Sam Frodo Pippin and Mary that is the finished Fellowship of the Ring Lord of the Rings diorama a project I've had on the back burner for nearly 20 years I am so happy to have this finished I'm so proud of this as a as a scene Here's a few finished pictures. I'll basically rotate it and take a little picture each way, way round. And then I'll try and give you guys a little bit of a top down as well. Cannot wait to start doing more uh, Middle Earth Monday content very soon. And I hope you guys are just as excited to come on this epic journey as I am. Okay guys, and there we have it. It is finally finished. I cannot wait to put this in a cabinet shelf. Finished. I'm so pleased to see it completely done. I didn't honestly know when I would ever get around to doing this project. So I'm really happy that I brought Middle Earth Monday to the channel. Uh, and I hope you guys want to see more and more Middle Earth stuff as time goes on. Uh, the votes are in and it appears that Pelnor Fields would be the next challenge I tackle in the Middle Earth Monday series. As I show you guys how to paint up all the individual elements from that box set. So I'm excited to bring that to you um, starting not next week, the week after. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give the video a like, ask me any questions or comments or anything below, and I will get back to each and every one of you guys. And if for some reason you're not already subscribed to my channel, make sure you do so you don't miss any more Middle Earth, 40K, Age of Sigmar, or many other types of content in the near future. Okay, guys. See you in the next one.